Hey folks, so before we begin today, uh, we're gonna get to work uh, working on the hull. I just wanted to do a quick comparison to show the enormity of this tank with an M1A1 turret compared to the M61A5 turret. And again, stressing, the M1A1 is not a small vehicle. It is not a small vehicle at all. This thing is enormous. This vehicle is going to be enormous. So um, I'm pretty excited that we're getting this all underway. I am not happy with the way that these uh, bands ended up looking to kind of tie these guns together, but I'm hoping that as we get it painted and everything, they won't look so out of place and abnormal. And I have a feeling that when, when they're the same color as everything else, they'll look a little bit better. So, um, anyway. <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to do that side-by-side -side comparison as we get stuff ready. And I think maybe even to put it in better perspective, if we mount the turrets on a hull here, I mean, this is even an even better comparison of how ridiculously huge this tank is compared to the Abrams. Um, I'm so excited to get this all finished and see it painted and everything. So let's get going with the rest of our build going back to the beginning now so we've got the turret pretty much done and there's going to be some more scratch building that I'm going to do later once I get the whole thing finished and I see where we're at kind of um, Americanize it and put some other stuff on it but we'll put that turret off to the side so like I said today working on the hull making some decisions as to what kind of scratch builds we need to do to make it more of a modern American tank than a fantasy tank and just working our way through it as we go. One thing I can tell you is we will not be mounting tracks and wheels today. Just again, the way I like to paint. Um, I like, wow, these are very thin hubs. I mean, wheels and then rubber. So I like to do all the wheel painting prior to mounting it on. So paint the vehicle, paint the wheels separately, then mount it, then do the tracks. And that means that the Skirts are going to have to be put on separately, so they'll be painted and then mounted on separately later. And so it's just, it's a process I go through, and I'm sure a lot of people do it like that. So anyway, we're going to get to work on this, you know, with some, some more occasional breaks in, in the work. Um, if you guys don't enjoy the way, like I say, I like to do a complete build. I like to show you the whole thing, and, and so I do the fast forward so you can see all the steps, and you can pause at individual places or slow it down if you want. If you guys would like to just see me do a whole step and then show it to you and then do a whole step and show it to you instead of do the whole fast forward video game music thing let me know that in the comments i just i'd like to show you the complete build so you see the whole process i don't i don't know how you guys like that but um let me get my supplies and get going
So that's actually a pretty simple build for the bottom of our hull. Still have lots to go, I'm sure, but if we wanted to, can we do a test fit? Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Not bad. Now, like I said, I'm not going to do the wheels right now because I like to paint the wheels separately. Um, and I still haven't really decided what the actual paint scheme is going to be. I'm leaning towards the NATO 3 color right now, but I'll have to figure that out, you know, later as I go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the upper hull. Now at this point, we've got some choices to make. There's some Pioneer tools that fit on here. Um, we could put some storage over there, or there are some basically big sponson pieces that fit on there. I kind of like the big sponson pieces that go on there. I think they look kind of tough, big armored. Um, we can still put a lot of stowage and a lot of different pieces on, on the, the rear turret rack and things like that. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these pieces on. I just like the way it looks in the pictures. You know, an Abrams does not have any kind of um storage on the hull itself. So, we won't have this one do it either. We can always put those tools somewhere else if we really want to put tools somewhere on the tank. We can manage that. We can do that. I'm I'm just going to Ignore these spaces here, they're all going to be covered up and we'll, we'll make do. So this kind of completes the basic assembly of the hull, what we're looking at here. We still got the side skirts to do, but again, the side skirts are going to be put on after we've got wheels and tracks done. But um, I think that these, you know, sponsons here really add to the big chunky bulkiness of this whole thing. So we will position Pioneer tools or whatever else somewhere else on here if that's really what we want. We'll put lots of stowage and everything uh, on the turret basket, the turret racks back here. We'll even attach some other stuff in other places. We'll do some scratch building. We'll make it American-ish. It'll look, it'll look cool. It's gonna look huge. We've got some uh, paint choices. I think, really, I've decided that I'm gonna go with the NATO 3 color for this one, not the Murdoch scheme, because um, I'm gonna save the Murdoch for something else. I definitely, you know, I've been thinking about it, and I, I don't wanna go desert at all with this. I just don't. I think it's going to look really different and cool in a camouflage color rather than just a, a single kind of desert. Even if we do shading and, you know, all that other stuff, I think it's going to look really good in a camouflage scheme. Uh, and that'll let us do some cool stuff with it. So I'm going to get set up to paint.
So finally found out what the little green bag of these metal bars is for, and it's pretty cool. This is how you put the pieces of track together. Almost like a real tank track. Well, just like a real tank track, actually. Except uh, imagine having to put these in between with a sledgehammer every single link. So this connects the two pieces of track, and then we'll connect them again, like so, after we get them all painted and weathered up and stuff. And this is what's going to hold them together. It's pretty nifty. A lot better than trying to glue it or melt it together or something like that. Nice. So I'm going to get the tracks ready now and uh, start the process of painting and weathering the tracks. But uh, we've got the bottom of the hole painted. Side A, side B. Road wheels ready to be uh, painted with the rubber and then touched up after we clip out the uh, drive sprockets and stuff like that. So, got all the wheels done, got our rollers done, got our tracks washed and ready. So now, we're gonna fit these onto the drive sprockets. This is a very unique tank in that it has uh, two sets of sprockets and it doesn't have return rollers in the front. Let's see, can we get that sprocket in the track link? And there we go. connections on the top and bottom so they'll be nicely covered up <clears throat> and this will be covered by track skirts so it doesn't matter if it's like perfect over there cool let's do the second one We've got tracks. Cool. Now we can put the uh, top of the hole back on if I can figure out where I actually put it. feel like the tracks are getting kind of squished up right there and it's preventing the right seating up there. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Big bulky thing. Now I'll put the uh, work on the side skirts and get that all assembled. And then, you know, we'll just mask this all off for actual painting when we, when we do the main painting of the rest of the tank. So now we're ready to finish the rest of the hull. Uh, what I have come to realize is that I should have ordered a much larger bottle of surface primer since it's going on everything. I'm also not bothering to mask any of these glass uh, periscopes because I am just going to repaint them with my own little treatment anyway. So the big concern that I have now is just making sure that I mask off the tracks and everything I painted before as I paint. So really, I'm just going to use a piece of plastic card and some masking tape to make sure that I don't mess up anything else that we've already painted and already covered. And that should really not be that big of a problem. This is the method I do for every tank, all the time anyway. And this will fit in there very nicely and protect everything we've already worked on. And I'm ready to load the airbrush up and get going. So we got the base coat done of the NATO green service primer. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. There's like barely a drop left. So uh, in the future, you need a bigger one of these than you definitely need of these. But that was common sense. I don't know why I screwed that up. I'm gonna give this, uh, the service primer, probably about 12 hours to dry before I do the other two camouflage colors over it, just to make sure it holds onto the plastic real well. And then I'm going to, I really like the green itself though. I mean, I love NATO green as just a color. And if you notice modern military American vehicles, a lot of them just, they put the green on. And it's one of those things where when you're just gonna be deployed <coughs> in a large armored formation, um, the bad guys are gonna see it coming. I guess they figured, you know, like with all thermal and infrared and all sorts of radar other detection devices, Visual camouflage is not as important as it used to be. Uh, maybe that's what it is, or, or maybe they just don't want to spend the money on all the camouflage paint. So they just leave them green. I'm not actually sure why they do that, but you'll see a vast number of uh, the modern vehicles just painted green. Just green. But I'm going to camo this one all up because I love the three-tone camouflage. So I'm going to let this one sit, let the paint cure for a little bit, and be back with the other two colors. All right, so I actually let this dry overnight. It's all ready to go now, and I still think the green looks really good on its own. I think that just putting it all in one nice color has really helped make these braces look part of the model rather than just something we threw on there, and it looks a lot better that way. Had a small disaster where that machine gun broke off in transit, but it's back on. So now I'm gonna start doing a little bit of masking and painting the NATO brown and NATO black on for the rest of the camouflage all around the vehicle. And then we'll be set to start doing a little bit of detail painting before we give it the first gloss coat.
here we go. Main paint job is done. I had to go back and I had to touch up a little bit with the black and the green. Had a little trouble with the brown wow, with some overspray. Um, I ended up, I thought that this area was just, just too much of the black in one spot, uh, camouflage wise, and I wanted to add a little bit more green up here on the turret. So, you know, I did a little revising and I think that really helped out a little bit. I'm not thrilled. I did this all freehand. I didn't use any model. I didn't use any painting guide. Uh, I just decided to let the airbrush flow and uh, the paint go based on, you know, what I've seen in real life um, with the NATO three color scheme. And as I was painting, I got the idea of what I want to actually do with this tank and how I want to finish it off. But I love this camouflage on this tank. I think it looks really, really good. And I think it's ready for the actual environment where I want to use it. So that's going to be kind of the next part of the video. I'm going to let all this sit overnight and just kind of rest, cure, do what it does. I've got a lot of brush painting I want to do before I go and give it the gloss coat, the first gloss coat for decals anyway. Um, but I think it's, yeah, really coming out great. I don't know if I should. I'll, I'll hold on to the next part where I say how I'm going to mark it and for what. But this wears the three color NATO camouflage really, really well, actually. All right, so thanks for joining me for this part, um, which is actually part two. I thought it might have been part three, but this is just part two. And we'll, I'll be back again soon with what might be the third and final. I don't know if it's going to be a three part or a four part. Depends on, on how long. But we'll definitely be back for part three really, really soon. So thanks.